to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon. Welcome to our... Is the mic on there, OC? Now it is. Okay. Welcome to our uh, March 21st council meeting, and uh, please note the council's in full attendance. We have a couple of people to recognize uh, under items from council. I thought we would we would uh, proceed with that. Before so, I want to. I don't want to forget. I want to pull D5 before I forget to say that. But uh, if we could, why don't we recognize uh, these two fine people we have in the audience with us, and then we'll continue on. So the city attorney will read the first proclamation. This is a proclamation recognizing James Farrow, and it reads in part, whereas James Farrow has spent 33 years in the local cable industry serving the customers of Victoria with cable television channels and internet access, whereas James Farrow and Suddenlink Communications provided cable channel 15 for the city's television programming and VTV 15 officially went on the air July 28th of 2008. Whereas James Farrow and Suddenly Communications did continue to improve the cable communications network in Victoria, introducing high-speed internet access to cable subscribers in 2013, transitioning to digital television platform with high-definition programming in 2014. And whereas James Farrow and Suddenly Communications did donate at no charge, Cable Channel 115 for the city high-definition television programs and VTV 115 officially went on the air in high definition in April of 2015. Now, therefore, I, Paul Pulasic, mayor of the city of Victoria, Texas, do officially declare March 21st, 2017 to be James Farrow and Suddenlink Communications Appreciation Day in recognition of the outstanding service they have provided to the city of Victoria. And it is signed by the mayor, Paul Pulasic. I'm not sure if OC was going to say anything, but I, do you mind? Because I would personally like to thank James, too, before we, poor Elgin comes up. But, um, you know, I told him and his wife earlier, you know, we really appreciate the work you did with us. And you always were available when I needed to call and ask a question. We've had a citizen complaint or something. You were available to answer any questions, but instrumental in us having this TV station that we have today that would provide our citizens a wealth of uh, information about what's going on. So thank you very much, and I wish you well in your retirement and have fun. Thank you very much. The only thing I will add is James himself has been there. Uh, starting a television channel from scratch is not an easy task. Uh, they've been there 24-7 when we've needed support. Uh, they've been there uh, financially when we first got the channel off the ground, contributed to that, uh, and, and frankly have been great technical partners in, in making sure our channel is up and running 99.99% .99 of the time. So again, uh, it's been great having James here. Uh, he has a, a d very distinguished long career with Suddenlink and, and the cable companies that were, they do work for prior to their purchase it, uh, but he's a, been a very close friend and a great technical advisor to the City of Victoria's television channel. Thank you, James. Thank you. I very much agree. Um, he has always been so available when, when citizens called me, and they, they have called in the past about cable problems, and you've been very responsive, so we're going to miss you, but enjoy your retirement. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And the second proclamation is in honor of Elgin Jansen and American Electric Power. Whereas Elgin Jansen began work for American Electric Power in March of 1968 as a lineman trainee with the Bay City Distribution Line crew, and whereas Elgin Jansen actively participated, supported, and helped facilitate the transition from a vertically integrated regulated electric utility through mandated deregulation to a transmission distribution service provider. Whereas Elgin Jansen provided a massive meter update and change out over a three year period, which included the conversion to smart meter technology. And whereas Elgin Jansen completed his 49th year of service with AEP Texas on March 18, 2017, 
Now, therefore, I, Paul Pulasek, mayor of the city of Victoria, Texas, do officially declare March 21st, 2017 to be Elgin Jansen and American Electric Power Appreciation Day in recognition of the outstanding service that Elgin Jansen and AEP have provided to the city of Victoria. And it is also signed by the mayor, Paul Pulasek. Elgin, I'm going to echo the same comments that I shared with you earlier. Is this, I'm like, oh, see, can you hear me? It's coming in and out. So, okay. But uh, as Elgin sits down, I'm going to share the same comments as I did about James. Uh, tremendous asset for the city of Victoria to work with. Always available. Um, you know, eager to take those calls. Never, never minded. And he got the same calls that uh, you know that we also had customer complaints on, but also willing to work with us in our public works division too, very much. So Elgin, we're going to miss you too, uh, and so I wish you well in your retirement, you and your wife. Thank you. Yes. Cert certainly agreed. 49 years of service. That's I've, in the letter you sent me. That's uh, unbelievable. And uh, you will be missed. Okay. We're still under items from council. Council, you'll have anything in particular? Can I pull Ms. D2? Elise? Pull D2. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. That is... Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, we have two items pulled then, D2 and D5. Um, if nothing else, why don't we do, I wanted to do D5 first because we have some people in the audience to recognize. So uh, if there's nothing else from council, okay. <coughs> Close the items from council and we'll do citizens communication. Okay. Were you... That's what I was going to say. All right? Do you want okay. to do citizen communication before yeah, let's, we get there? Yeah, let's do citizens communication okay. first. So we'll open that up to anyone who would like to speak. Um, please state your name and address for the record and keep your comments at least to five minutes out of respect for everyone else. So now's the time to come up to the podium if anyone wants to comment. Okay. <clears throat> Seeing no one jump up, we'll go ahead and close citizens communication. And uh, we'll move into, we'll do D5 real quick if that's acceptable. D5 is a resolution accepting donated funds from the Victoria Crime Stoppers Incorporated in the amount of $1,662 to be used for the purchase of four body cameras and accessories for use by the Victoria Fire Marshal's Office, authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to accept this donation and declaring an effective date. So moved. Uh, second. A motion and a second. And we do have some people here from Crime Stoppers. If they would stand up. I saw John Stevens and... I bet if you'll walk up and the fire marshal and the fire chief come with you, we can get a picture taken. There you go. <laughs> and Lila. <laughs> we very much appreciate the contributions you guys make. It's uh, It speaks volumes. I see. Do you mind taking a picture of this group? Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Thank you again. And, you know, we have so many wonderful organizations and to donate like you do to our public safety. I know recently uh, the 100 Club has donated and others, the fire department group. So it's, it's 
It's very meaningful and very appreciated. Thank you. <coughs> Council, do you all have any questions? If not, we have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay. Item passes. Now D2. D2 is a resolution <coughs> authorizing the city manager to execute a renewal of a contract with the Department of State Health Services Vital Statistics Unit in an estimated amount of $7,000 over two years for the remote certification program and declaring an effective date. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion? My only question was the Historic Preservation Fund, what is it for? It's for uh, April's going to do a much better job. It's for them um, <laughs> making it sure they rest for restore, <laughs> not restore, but yeah, yeah well, the pres restore. Our preservation fund can be used for um, things like protecting our, our birth and death records. So we can use it for like electronic software to help us with that. Um, we've purchased shelving for our vaults to hold the, you know, and books to hold <coughs> our birth and death records. So, but it can only be used for those certain things. It can't be used in any other way in our office. So we could even use it for staff if necessary in order to help us preserve the records. Oh, it's to clean up the dungeon down there. <laughs> wow. Well, April, remind us how old some of your records are. Yeah, we, have, we do have records dating to the late 1800s. So. I know. So does that include putting it on fish or something, some kind of electric? Electronic? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am, we do have a laser fish program. Good. Okay. Which makes our Just customer wondered. service much more quick. <laughs> yeah. It does. Yeah, I hated to go down there for payroll records, so <laughs> I can imagine. <clears throat> okay, are there any further discussion on this item? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. If those opposed, the same sign. Okay, D2 passes. I guess we can just do the rest of the consent agenda. There are four items remaining on the consent agenda tonight. The first is the approval of minutes of the regular meeting of March 7th, 2017. Item D3 is a resolution awarding a contract for janitorial services at the City of Victoria 700 Main Center and the Police Community Services Office to Roxanne Calvo in doing business as Cleaning Pro Janitorial Services for the low bid of $29,700, authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to obtain the services and declaring an effective date. D4 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a 36-month lease agreement with AT&T Company for the use of fiber data lines to provide interconnectivity for various city locations in an amount not to exceed $58,231.44 and declaring an effective date. And item D6 is a resolution accepting donated funds from State Farm <coughs> in the amount of $7,500 to be used for the purchase <coughs> of smoke alarms and authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to accept this donation and declaring an effective date. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay, ayes have it. Uh, we have four resolutions. The first three we'll do here, and then do we need to excuse to a really brief executive session <coughs> next door right here? Yes, sir. And then we'll come out, and if needed be, vote on E4. Just want to. Okay, so E1. E1 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute the First Amendment to the Supplemental Agreement with the Victoria Park Improvement Association to extend the deferral period for rental payments related to their option, excuse me, their operation of the municipal golf course through June 1st, 2017, and declaring an effective date. Make a motion to approve item E1. <clears throat> Second. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion to second on E1. Are there any questions or discussions? Uh, can I, I'd like to explain why I've had to ask sure. for this, if you don't mind. The uh, the board from VPI did meet their deadline of getting a business plan turned into me, which was February the 28th. And so after going through it, I met with um, Ken Miles and uh, some of the board members. And after meeting with them, I had some questions that I needed some further clarification on. So I've asked the clarification to come back. There was no way I could do that and then have a contract amendment on this council meeting, uh, which would have, I would have had to back it up two weeks. I just didn't give myself enough time to get this done. So it's uh, me needing a little more time to get you back a contract. My goal is to try to get you back something first of May, so shouldn't go to June. But that's why I'm asking for the extension. It's nothing of anything that they did. Okay. So it's the request is not coming from them, it's coming from you? It's me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Ma what about the, the bank note? Did they ever resolve anything on that? Uh, they still have a credit line outstanding note. They've got plans on how to reduce the debt on that. Uh, and that was part of their business plan that they presented. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They, uh, I can say one thing. They, uh, 
to date have not had to access that credit line when we met. Uh, so uh, they managed to, most of the fiscal year, not to have to access it, which means that the revenues have exceeded their expenses. So, so the balance on the note, it's the same it's as it there. was when they... Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> and you said that business plan has in there uh, a payment plan back for that plus our rent? Uh, yeah, well, uh, our rent was to start back in April 1, so I'm just postponing June 1. And pr I'll probably have some suggestions for different ways for them to pay that uh, note back to us on. I guess that's what I'm confused about. Mm -hmm. Is this um, <coughs> extending the deferral, but then they'll make the payments? Or is this extending the deferral to June so that the deferral is actually a longer period? Well, their contract runs through 2021. I don't envision extending the contract. So we'll we'll figure out a way to get the payments done. So they're they're going to make all the due payments as it stands right now. It's just a deferral. I'm just making sure. That's what you were asking, I thought. Right. And that's the way I understood it, too. So it's so. a delay. Delay, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll make sure I understood it. Yeah. Okay. Not, a, not a waiver. A Correct. Delay. Correct. Good point. Not a waiver. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same. Okay, uh, ayes have it, E2. Item E2 is a resolution awarding the 2016-17 Reclaim Seal Coat Project <clears throat> in Colony Creek Outlier Neighborhoods, Wayside Terrace, Putney Moor, Old Victoria South, and Tanglewood Subdivision to Brandon Paving Company Limited for their low bid of $1,235,180 authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to complete the project and declare an effective date. I move to adopt. Second. Okay, motion and second. Do you want to share anything, or you, Mr. Shorty, you just there for questions? I'm here to answer any questions, Mayor. Okay. Well, I have a question. Would you explain again, as, as we will explain several times, um, exactly what is going to happen in Tanglewood? Okay, certainly. In Tanglewood... Uh, that part of this project involves applying, uh, uh, blading in some hot mix in those areas where you have depressions in the roadway just to provide some level up. And that is a, a, a temporary measure to improve ride quality until uh, we have the debt capacity to uh, replace those utilities and then rebuild the roads. And when we talk about uh, capital improvement program later this evening, you'll see that our proposal is to do that, uh, those utilities in 2021, when we have the debt capacity to do so. Uh, so this is a, a temporary measure to improve ride quality in the interim. Thank you. And we do plan on sending those residents in that neighborhood a letter explaining exactly what we're, we're doing so they'll understand. Yeah, I would suspect some of them will be disappointed because they may think they're going to get a rebuild now and we're, we're not able to. It's just the facts, it's just the reality. But the level up hopefully will help some. For the public's sake, let's remind everybody what a reclaimed seal code is. Okay, it is a this is a this is our maintenance project. Every year we're trying to do about two million dollars worth of maintenance work uh, to keep our better streets prolong their life and keep them from deteriorating to the point where we have to completely rebuild. And so for some of these streets, it just involves applying a, a new seal coat to the road, which is basically applying a, a, some liquid asphalt and some rock over the top of it. In some of these areas, uh, you've got base failures that are occurring, and so we will actually have to come in there grind up the base, mix some cement in it, and reset it so that it's a very firm foundation for the roadway, and then applying uh, liquid asphalt and the rock on top of that. So it's not a complete rebuild. This is maintenance. How long have you all been adding cement to the base? That's not. We just started doing that uh, in this reclaiming process oh, two or three years ago. Prior to that, we were primarily using fly ash to uh, stabilize with. Fly ash has gotten very difficult to get. So. I don't know if it's my imagination, but I've been in some of the areas where you use the cement, and it, it it seems to be strong. I, how do I measure that? I mean, a road's a road, but that parking lot in the park, did y'all use cement in that base? That Yes. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's interesting. Certainly hope it, it works it, out. It appears to be is what I'm trying to say. So. Makes a strong foundation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? I have one more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, Wagner Way, Lingo Lane, and Magruder Drive, when is that going to be rebid out? We are uh, in negotiations right now with a private firm about uh, <coughs> making a uh, changing some property so that we can realign that and uh, would also uh, require or we're asking that they make uh, additional monetary contribution to the project. And so uh, assuming that that moves forward fairly quickly, uh, we would hope to bid that within the next two couple months, maybe May. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be in this fiscal year? Absolutely going to okay. be in wh whichever way, whether it's realigned or not, we're going to bid it this year because the okay. money's available right now. Okay. And that was the balance of that uh, that you have in there? Was it the 2.147? Right. Okay. 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 No further questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. E E3. Item E3 is a resolution granting a variance to section 13-27A <coughs> of the Victoria City Code, which requires people who develop property within one mile of an existing city water main <coughs> to tap and extend the water main. For a 33.98 acre tract located on Pleasant Green Drive between Bottom Street and Hand Road, owned by Scott and Kelly Wyatt, and declaring an effective date. Council? Second. Motion and a second. Are there any questions? CM1 was well written. Yes, I, I appreciated the, the condition so that it, it looks like it's forward, <coughs> uh, looking forward. Okay, very good. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Thank you. So, thank you, Lynn. And you got a big presentation coming up, so you can't leave. But <laughs> so we'll go uh, into executive session briefly, right yes, next please. door, and then we'll come back out here in a few minutes. The city will recess for executive session on the twenty-first day of March, twenty seventeen, at five twenty-two p.m. The subject matter of the executive session deliberation is as follows: Texas Government Code Section five fifty one point zero seven two to deliberate the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property interests due to the fact that a deliberation in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the position of the city in negotiations with a third person. Thank you.